Hey guys, today we're going to learn how to derive the quadratic formula, uh, which basically means we are going to take a quadratic equation in standard form and show, or sometimes it's called prove, that this quadratic formula will solve any quadratic equation in standard form um, for any values of a, b, or c. And we can solve that simply by replacing those a, b, and c into the quadratic formula itself. So um, before we can do that, let's talk a little bit about what the quadratic formula actually is. And please understand that it's essentially, it's just a tool. It takes no more significance than that. It's a tool that we'll use just like we would use um, any formula. Uh, say the formula for finding the area of a triangle and we would A equals one half B over H. Well, that's essentially what this is. The quadratic formula is just a tool. And what do we use it for? Well, we use it for a couple things, um, and they have very subtle differences. Uh, one is to find the roots of a quadratic polynomial, to find the zeros of a quadratic function, and to find the x-intercepts of a parabola. Now, let's talk about what each one of these things are, but one thing you do need to know is the quadratic formula will not only um, find these things, but it'll also tell you if they even exist. And uh, we'll talk about that later. Okay, so um, what does it mean by the roots of a quadratic polynomial? Well, here's a polynomial. It's quadratic because it's a second degree uh, polynomial. And to find the roots of a polynomial, any polynomial, for example, if I had, uh, let's see, 2x minus 6, it's a polynomial. And if I wanted to know what the roots of a polynomial are, I'd want to know what value of x would make this zero. Well, how would I make this zero? Well, I set it equal to zero and solve for x. And uh, pretty simply, you would find out that x equals 3, and that would represent the root of this polynomial. Well, that's the same thing um, that we do with a quadratic. We want to know what x would, um, would make this polynomial zero. Well, that's very related to the next thing, finding the zeros of a quadratic function. Because a quadratic function is just saying, notice the quadratic polynomial. Now it's saying that this polynomial is a function. And I have my inputs of x, which is shown here. And given any x, what would be the output of the function? And when we want to know what the zeros of any particular function, we want to know what values of x or what inputs would give me an output of 0. In other words, it would look something like that. And we're just asking what what value of x would give me an output of zero? And that's considered the zeros of a quadratic function. As for the x-intercepts of a parabola, well, often we show a function like this instead of in a more graph-friendly uh, graph form where we have y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. And here it's easy to graph on a Cartesian coordinate system with x and y axes like this. And a parabola is just the shape of the graph of a quadratic function. And here we have here a parabola. And we talked about the x-intercepts. Well, the x-intercepts are these points right here where the parabola cross or intercept the x-axis. And one thing we know about each of these points, like let's take this point in particular, this one right here, I know that um, that the y value is 0. So again, it's setting the y value to 0 and solving for this x, or where it exactly is. Now this 0, or this intercept, would be considered this positive one here, or the one um, to the right of the axis of symmetry. And this negative one here would be this value of x. So basically, when we're solving the quad using the quadratic formula, we have two solutions write that positive and negative. And that shows that very clearly um, as x-intercepts on our graph. OK, so let's go ahead and um, prove that this will work for any quadratic equation or function. OK, so we're going from here to here and um, a quadratic equation in this standard form. So the two things we need to understand is how to complete a square algebraically, 
and then how to isolate the x in an equation by using the square by using square roots or some people call it the square roots method so we're going to go ahead and now prove the quadratic formula Okay, first thing we're going to do is we're going to need to complete the square. And in doing so, in completing the square, the most important thing to start with is that we need to have the quadratic coefficient or the leading coefficient equal to 1. So our first step is really getting that uh, to be 1. And we do that dividing through the entire equation by a. And that, um, basically every single term is going to be described by uh, divided by a. But if we divide this side by a, of course we have to divide this side by a as well. Obviously, 0 divided by a is going to maintain 0. We're doing this, though, because this a over a simplifies to 1. That's exactly what we want to happen. So we now have our form, and we're ready to start the process of completing the square. So completing a square, what we want to do is make room for our perfect square trinomial. So I'm going to take this constant c over a and I'm just going to move this to the other side by subtracting c over a from both sides. What we've done is we've made room to complete the square and what that means is we want to find some number that we're going to add to this side over here so that this is a perfect square trinomial. In a perfect square trinomial means that it came from some binomial that was squared. So we need to find that squared binomial. And we've learned um, how to complete the square that we want to take this linear term and divide it by 2. So we've learned that before. So to take a b over a divided by 2 simply means b over 2a. And that would be dividing by 2. Now we've got our binomial square. Next thing, we need to complete the square, meaning we need to turn this into that perfect square trinomial. So we need to square this term. And in doing so, b over 2a squared gives us b squared over 4a squared. We now have exactly what we want. We have a perfect square trinomial, which we can replace with this binomial squared. And that makes me happy. However, if we've added b squared over 4a squared to this side, we need to balance the equation. So we need to also add it to this side. So I'm going to move this guy over just a little bit to make room for him and add him along. Now we've balanced the equation and we just have to clean up this side on the right here. So we're going to add the terms on the right side and simplify. So to add these we need a common denominator so I need this denominator to be 4a squared as well. So I'm going to multiply by the multiplicative identity of 4a over 4a. That gets me the denominator I want. All I have to do is multiply the numerator 4 times, or I'm sorry, c times 4 times a, which I'll just rearrange to be 4ac. Now I have a common denominator. I can go ahead and um, add these fractions. So now I've gotten exactly what I want. I have completed the square. So we took care of step one. We completed the square. Now that we have our, um, our equation rewritten as a squared binomial, we're going to go ahead and isolate x. We're going to solve for x now by getting it alone, and we're going to use the square roots method, which essentially means I'm going to take the square root of the left side. The square root of something squared is just its base. In other words, this is just an inverse operation. Taking the square root of something squared basically undoes it. We're getting rid of this, leaving just that x plus uh, b over 2a. I don't need the parentheses at this point. But if we've taken the square root of this side, we also have to take the square root of the right side. And when we take the square root of the right side, considering these are all just numbers at this point, we need to consider both the positive and negative roots. That's where that plus or minus comes in. Now we can simplify the radical expression. The radical expression, we've learned that to take the square root of some fraction, it's just the same as taking the square root of the numerator over the square root of the denominator. And quickly, we should notice that this... Um, the square root of 4a squared, well, in the radicand here, 4a squared, this is a perfect square. So the square root of 4a squared is just 2a. So our next step is to get x alone. So essentially, to get x alone, we need to uh, subtract b over 2a from both sides and get it alone. Now, we are basically there. I've got an x alone, and many people will use this as the quadratic formula because this gives us a lot of information. 
um, just as a side note here, this would be considered our axis of symmetry for the equation. And um, in graphing, that's a pretty big deal, finding the axis of symmetry. However, normally we see the quadratic formula expressed over one denominator. And notice that we have 2a on the bottom of both of these, or in the denominator. We're going to simplify the right side. Uh, because we do have a common denominator, we're going to go ahead and add everything over that common denominator. So the final quadratic formula, x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a, we have, in essence, um, derived it and proved that it will work for any uh, quadratic equation in standard form. I hope this has helped, and we'll uh, see you in class.